Well, what I teach is that Jesus is only coming back one time. Yeah. There's nothing in there's nothing in the Bible that says Jesus is coming back twice because that would be two times. One time to get the Christians and rapture them away, and then another time to judge the, the nations. The Bible talks about one time and both of those events happening in the same return. Both of them. There's no rapture in the sense of how it's being taught. I know people go to Thessalonians and talk about being caught up, but if you cross reference that with other scripture, those saints are meeting Jesus in the air. It doesn't say he takes them off to heaven with them. Yeah. He also lets you know that he, re he also lets you know that the resurrection accompanies this event. If you look at any teaching about the the so-called rapture or any movie like Left Behind and people's empty, you know, their mm -hmm. their their clothes are just left. They never show the resurrection of the saints, even though every reference to what people call the rapture always includes the resurrection of the saints. But I do have a, a Bible question since um they were people were asking them before. So my Bible question is, um, what are your views on the thousand year kingdom? Do you think um, I don't know the terminology like the you know the proper ones where it's like pre after? If you think it's just a metaphor or if we're living it out now, I personally think the thousand year kingdom is going to be a physical, real kingdom, real thousand years, um, as according to the Bible says, and I think. The book of Daniel and Revelations kind of, if you combine them together, for me, it's sufficient evidence that it will be a real 1,000 year kingdom. But I wanted to know what your thoughts were, Brother Josh. I have a whole class on that titled The Millennium Reign of Christ, and I teach the exact same thing. It's going to be a literal 1,000 year reign, and it's going to be a physical place. And um, several Old Testament prophets, other than Daniel, attest to that. Yeah, that's what I think, too. So since we're kind of in agreement, my question is, I feel like it's really obvious and clear. I just feel like it's one of those clear Bible things. But why are there so many people? I have close friends that, you know, we grew up in the same church since we were kids, but they, they have mm -hmm. a different view. So even if we're like eating from the same table, our views are different. How come you think, even though in our opinions, it's clear, how do you think people can still have other you know, opinions about it. Well, well, it's clear to them too, but you have something in the religious world that people call over spiritualization. Have you ever heard that term before? Yes. Right. So do you know what it means? You're familiar with what it does, what it means? Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's the problem. People will see stuff clearly but they will over, over spiritualize it to make it mean something else. Mm -hmm. And because they know that there are some things in the Bible that are allegorical or metaphorical, they mm -hmm. think that gives them a license to see anything that way, even though there is no evidence in the Bible passage whatsoever to yeah. support that. I have a whole class titled over spiritualization. This mm -hmm. is when somebody is too, it has two meanings. It's when one, Somebody takes something in the Bible that's literal and they try to make it spiritual or yeah, metaphorical. That's the way I understand right? it. Right. The other definition is when somebody thinks every single thing that happens in their life is spiritual. Hold up, y'all. My Discord Spiritualization. Crash. And a lot of people do that, right? But the first definition would mean trying to make something spiritual or metaphorical, everything even if the Bible doesn't give somebody like, or well, it's demons, right? Even mm -hmm. if the Bible doesn't support that, that's one of the reasons why people do that. Another reason why people do that is, you know, even though the Bible clearly states something, is because it's known as eisegesis. You know, people want to read their own thoughts and feelings into a passage. In yeah. other words, a lot of people read the Bible in a way to make it say what they want it to say. Mm -hmm. It's not that they necessarily can't see what it's saying. They see what it's saying, but they want to interpret it to mean something else. Like, for instance, perfect example. Say if you had a woman who wanted to get with you, Victor, and you told her in the most harshest way, I think you're unattractive. 
we have nothing in common. I hate you, whatever. Some people, believe it or not, they will interpret those harsh words to mean something nice because some people hear only what they want to hear, even if nothing was said. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And that's the same way it is when people read the Bible. People read the Bible and they make it say what they want to say. I knew a preacher one time that told me he heard, you know how it says in um, Leviticus, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, meaning mm -hmm. don't be homosexual. Yes. He said he heard another preacher say, who was trying to justify homosexuality, what it means is a man shouldn't sleep with another man the way he sleeps with a woman. In other words, it's saying that you're supposed to have sex with another, you can have sex with another man as long as you're doing it different from how you would have sex with a woman. Yeah. Exactly. And that's how people do with other scriptures. People do that. So that's the reason why, Victor. Yeah, I mean, it, it was one of those things I, like, you know, I read it and it's like, dude, it's like, it's so obvious it's going to be a physical 1,000 year kingdom. And so what I guess, Brother Josh, in the, since too. we both think it's a thousand year kingdom, literal, who gets to participate? Those, according to 1 Corinthians 15, those who died believing in Christ, the first mm -hmm. resurrection, they come up in the first resurrection, and those who are alive and believing in Christ when he returns. Those are yeah. going to be the ones who rule there. Yeah. Everybody else who's there is going to be people who did not accept Christ and people who will later be born during that 1,000 year reign. And they're mm -hmm. going to be ruled over by Christ and the saints. Mm. Have you heard it's not, that? Th it's not, in other words, it's not just going to be Christians in the 1,000 year reign. It's going to be people who were unbelievers as well as people who are going to be born during that time. Because, you know, they're going to have to still be somebody born during that time. And they're going to be human people, mortals during that time. That's what the prophets tell us. Do you, that makes a lot of sense as to when Satan is released from his a thousand year reign, how he's able to deceive the nations again. Exactly. Who's, who are these I nations? never thought about, I never thought those details. And how is he going to deceive them? And how are they going to be destroyed by the fire of God from heaven? Right? How are these people just going to back up on earth magically? They never went anywhere. They were there the whole time, you know, still procreating and continuing on. So would those right? non-believers technically... I fixed the link now, y'all. So um, I'm dropping oh, cool. Brother Josh's YouTube channel in and everything. Apologize about that. So if anybody wants to follow Brother Josh, or not even if, you should follow Brother Josh. Click the link in the description now. It is good. What? So do you, do you think those who survived... The seven year tribulation, Jesus comes back, thousand year kingdom. Technically, those people would have the mark of the beast. Well, no, I'm not, I don't teach a seven year tribulation like a, oh, because obviously, if you see, if you teach the seven year, that probably means you also believe in the rapture too, right? Am I correct? Uh, like me personally, uh, I believe that there will be I've a right. Met, I've never, Go I've ahead. never met, I'm just saying, sorry to cut you off, but I've never met somebody. Who believes in a seven year tribulation but don't believe in the rapture as well? I've never met somebody like that before. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm assuming that you also believe in a rapture too, right? Yeah, I mean, I believe the way I understand it and I interpret it is that there's going to be a right a rapture only for the righteous Christians. Okay. Um, and then, you know, that kind of explains why. They're still God fearing people, but they don't take the mark of the beast because there has to be someone left to be persecuted. Well, what I teach is that Jesus is only coming back one time. Yeah. There's nothing in there's nothing in the Bible that says Jesus is coming back twice. Cause that would be two times. One time to get the Christians and rapture them away, and then mm -hmm. another time to judge the, the nations. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about one time and both of those events happening in the same return mm. both of them there's no rapture in the sense of how it's being taught i know people go to thessalonians and talk about being caught up but mm -hmm. if you cross-reference that with other scripture 
those saints are meeting Jesus in the air. It doesn't say he takes them off to heaven with them. Yeah. He also lets you know that the, he also lets you know that the resurrection accompanies this event. If you look at any teaching about the, the so-called rapture or any movie like Left Behind and people's empty, you know, their, mm -hmm. their, their clothes are just left. They never show the resurrection of the saints, even though every reference to what people call the rapture always includes the resurrection of the saints. You know, the ones that died. So you can't just leave that out and then just say, oh, we're just going to focus on the, the people being caught up. Right. So there is no rapture in the sense of how it's being taught, like a secret return of Jesus. He said he's going to come as a thief in the night. All that means is unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about it being secret. It's talking about it being unexpected. If a thief is a smart thief, he's not going to try to break in your house when you know he's coming. He's not going to do that. So when Jesus said, I come as a thief in the night, that means I'm showing up suddenly, unexpectedly, not secret. That's why I say he's coming with a trumpet. You know, when a king arrives, he has trumpeters announcing that he's coming. Every mm -hmm. time you read about Jesus' second coming, it mentions trumpets being involved with it. Yeah. What type of person shows up secretly was blowing a trumpet? What kind of person does that? That's not secret. You're announcing that you're here. You want everybody to know you're here. So even when it talks about the verse they go to talking about the rapture, it says he's coming with the voice of the archangel or the sound of the archangel, like a loud shout or a loud trumpet. Mm -hmm. It tells you that. There's nothing secret about that. So the doctrine of the rapture, this like Jesus is going to come secretly and sneak people away. Like one day we all walk outside and we see a bunch of uh, clothes just lying on the ground. That is not scriptural. That's not in the scriptures. That's made up. So the, the saints that you read about that um, are being persecuted in Revelations are some of the saints that did not make it to the place of safety that it speaks of in Revelation chapter 12, which is not heaven. If you read Revelation 12, there's nothing in the scriptures that talk about somebody being spirited away to heaven and then other people being persecuted on earth and then after the uh, seven year tribulation then people are coming uh, from heaven and all of that other stuff now all of that is one event and you can read it yourself you can read it yourself Vic, uh, victor yeah um, i got it open here so you're saying i mean what, what, do, you, I, what do you have open first thessalonians which one you have open uh revelation 12 I was okay. just I was skimming to see which verse. Okay. Where it says the um she fled from the face uh from the face of the serpent. That's the one you're looking for. Revelation 12. Right? Yeah. Which verse, brother verse Josh? 12. Okay. We start at verse 12. Therefore rejoice. Oh, this is Revelation chapter 12, verse 12 in the KJV. Therefore, verse 13. Matter of fact, go to verse 13. Because they yes, get sir. right into it. Go to verse 13. Verse 13 in the KJV. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Now, who's this woman, Victor? Who's this woman? Um Eve. You says Eve? Yeah. As as an Adam and Eve? No, I so in verse 13 it's the it's the bride the body of christ yes I'm not sure but specifically yeah. specifically it's the israelite church with the gentiles integrated into it the mm. jews and the gentile christians that's what it is to prove that you can start at verse one and this woman is being described in the exact same way that joseph described his family back in genesis 37. Mm. You know, 12 stars, except Joseph said 11 because he was dreaming about his 11 um, other brothers and he cries his mother as his father as the sun and the moon. Mm. So when you read it here, this is a vision of the Israelites. But it also tells you in other scriptures that the Gentiles believers were grafted in with them. 
So they're mm -hmm. all represented as um, 12 stars with the sun and the moon. So this is the church, the Jew first, and also the Greek, as Paul said. He said, salvation to all that believeth, to the Jew first, and also the Greek. That's the Gentile believers, mm -hmm. right? So this is talking about the, the, the Jews and the Gentiles as a church. That's what this is talking about. So when you get down to verse 13, it's talking about how this dragon is persecuting the church, right? But the Israelites produce the Messiah. See, so read mm -hmm. verse 13 again. Read that again. And when the dragon, let me show it for everybody. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Now, you know who the dragon is, right, Victor? Who's the dragon? It's Satan. And who's the man child? It's Jesus. And who produced what woman gave birth to the man child that's described as having 12 tribes or 12 stars? That's the Israelites. The king, the line of David, yeah. Exactly. You know, Judah. Co correct. So this woman represents whoever produced the man child. You follow what I'm saying? And that's, mm -hmm. and that's why she described as having 12 stars. That's a reference to the Israelites, the 12, the 12 tribes, tribes of Israel. Yeah. So, right. And the Gentiles were integrated. That's what Paul was talking about in Romans, I think, 11, right? Grafted in. That's what they call it, being grafted in, right? Mm -hmm. Now, look what it says in verse 14. Read that. And this is all symbolism, by the way. This is not a literal woman. This is not a literal dragon. These are symbols representing stuff, representing the 12 tribes of Israel with the with um as Christian. This is a Christian 12 tribes of Israel, by the way, not just the 12 tribes of Israel in general, with the believing Gentiles as well. But continue reading. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Right. And that means three and a half years. Right. So yeah. it says to the woman was giving two wings of a great eagle. This is not a literal um, eagle. This is not a literal woman. If you read your Bible, I always call Revelation the test book because it tests you on everything you learned up to this point, even euphemisms, symbolism, spirituality, you name it. Revelation just throws it all at you. This is why most Christians don't understand it because they haven't been reading much up to this point. And a mm -hmm. lot of the symbolism that Revelation draws on comes from the Old Testament. That's why a lot of people don't understand it because they don't read the Old Testament. But if you read Genesis 37 verses 9 and 10, you will see that this description of this woman is the exact same description minus one star that Joseph gave up his 11 brothers and his mother and father. Sun and the moon, his father was the sun, his dad, I mean, his father was the sun, his mother was the moon, His and the 11 stars were his 11 brothers. It wasn't 12 because Joseph was the one dreaming about it. Uh, what they would be star. doing. And he would be the 12th star, exactly. Right? Now, read verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Do you know what floods represent in the Bible? Like a renewal? Like destruction? Yes and yes, but when you're talking about a flood chasing somebody, that's what's happening here. He sent this flood out there. It represents armies. I got a whole lesson titled, What is the Flood in Revelation 12 and 15? Mm -hmm. Just breaking all of that down, right? But so this is like an army. Exactly. Somebody said, that sister said it as soon as I can, can, as soon as I said it, right? That's what it represents. So this serpent, which is the dragon. Keep in mind, all of this is going on during the, the, the start of the Great tribulation, as people call it, right? Mm -hmm. Satan's going to have armies on earth pursuing believers, right? That's what he's going to have going on. So yeah. he's sending an army after the Christian church believers. 
that are made up of Jews and Gentiles. That's why I use that 12 star metaphor, because it always represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, watch what it says. He and the earth Verse helped 16. the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now, all we know is that the earth opening up symbolizes some kind of way that God is going to help some Christians escape this persecution from the mm -hmm. dragon. We don't know what the earth literally opening up. I mean, what the earth opening up literally shows how he's going to do it. Yeah. We don't know. All we know is that this is going to prevent the flood from getting to the woman. Right? But watch what it says, though. Go ahead and read. Could that be a reference to the thousand year to the pit, which would be in the earth? No. This, this doesn't have anything to do with that. Okay. This is talking about the armies. This is taking care of the armies. The thousand mm -hmm. year um, pit, the bottomless pit, that's yeah. a spiritual prison for Satan and his angels. Okay. This is during the time where Satan, this is before the thousand year period. Mm -hmm. But keep reading and watch what it says in verse and the, 17. Verse 17. And the dragon was warped with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. Dang, that's great. Hey, wait, what? Well, they still keep the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. He. It says the remnant of her seed. You know what the word remnant means, don't you, Victor? Mm -hmm. Few remaining. Yeah. So that means some of them are not going to get away. So during the tribulation, God is going to provide a safe haven for some Christians. And some Christians are going to go be stay and get persecuted. Mm -hmm. That's what you're reading here. That's why I said the remnant of her seed. Remnant means few remaining. Like he's going to get some. Right. But mm -hmm. notice who he's persecuting. He said he's persecuting those that keep the commandments of God. That's the laws of God, y'all. Every time in the Bible, every single time in the Bible. And I, I, I invite anybody to challenge me on this. Commandments of God always means the law. Now, if it says the commandments of Jesus, that could be the law or the gospel. But when mm -hmm. it says commandments of God, it always means the law.